Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. What we're going to take a look at today is rendering in the cloud. Um, rendering in the cloud is something that is just so powerful. In my opinion, it's one of the best tools um, for just kind of conveying an idea, being able to get something out to your client in a very quick manner. Uh, it used to be if you wanted to do a render, it would take hours, maybe days, maybe weeks, who knows, it all depended on the power of your computer. And as we all know, the power of computing has developed quite a bit in the past little while, so we're able to do things now like cloud rendering. So why don't we take a look at um, how this is done from Revit 2015. As you can see here, I've got uh, 15 views all set up. I don't really have any um, specific lighting set up. I, I haven't really done a whole lot of work as to uh, how I want the sun to come in. All that stuff is just kind of, I've just set it up very basically. And what I'd like to do is send all of these views out to the cloud. So if you take a look at the top here, along your, uh, the top of the ribbon, you have different tabs. And in the view tab now, there is an option for render gallery, render in the cloud, and then render. So if you just wanted to do the traditional old render straight out of Revit, this is the one that you would use. Um, there's also the option uh, with the teapot, you'll see that in all these views. But uh, the one that we're after today is render in the cloud. So with all of these views set up, I just click on render in the cloud, and it's going to ask me to sign in. So I'm just going to put my credentials in, get all set up here, and you'll see that, uh, here let me just do that again because I may have goofed up my password. So when I say sign in, you'll see that up at the top it's saying uh, that I'm, I'm logged in to Autodesk here and you'll get this dialog box for rendering in the cloud. So the first thing that it does is it asks you um, which views you would like to do. So right now my active view is view 15. If I want to do all of these as I do, I just click on render all 3D views. So now that I've chosen which views I want, I decide what type of output style I would like. So you can choose a still image, an interactive panorama, which is really, really great. This allows you to um, basically put your camera on a swivel and you can look all around from the point of view that you set your camera up at. And then you have Illuminance Studies, which shows you hot spots essentially in your view as to where the most light will, will be. Uh, so we're just going to choose Still Image for the time being. I'm going to use uh, Final Render Quality, but for the image size, I'm just going to leave these at um, medium, which is one megapixel. So bear in mind with your cloud credits, because um, you might want to uh, save your cloud credits for uh, final rendering, and then use this maximum 16 megapixel, which is I believe 4,000 pixels on the longest edge, so that's a really big image. And um, if you choose one megapixel, just the standard, it's not going to use up as many credits. So we'll take a look at how that all comes together at the end. Um, so the image size, again, I'm just going to use uh, the one megapixel. And my exposure, I'm going to leave that as advanced. Um, you can choose the native option, but like I said, I didn't spend too much time uh, setting up the, the sun and any lights in this scene. So for the time being, I'll just use advanced. If you have got your model developed to that point, you can use native and that will give you the settings from your file. So bear in mind, those are, are uh, important settings to note. And then your file format, you can choose PNG, JPEG, and TIFF. Um, PNG is nice because then you can use a anti-alias, uh, sorry, you can use a, an alpha transparency here and you could be basically put in a background behind of the actual render if you like. I'm going to use a, a JPEG, high quality, and you'll notice here that it's saying that I need 16 cloud credits to do this and I've got X amount left over. I also have the option of saying email me when complete. So I might need to know exactly when these are done so that I can share them to somebody and um, then I'll know I could head out for lunch and know exactly when they're finished. So for the time being I'll just hit start rendering 
and it's going to send this set of views to the cloud and what we'll do in the meantime is we'll go take a look at a batch of these renders that I've done before so one of the nice things about this is while this is sending uh, these views to the cloud I could go back into my Revit model and keep working. So that's something that you couldn't do before if you were only rendering directly from the application. So let's go, we'll click on continue in the background. It doesn't want me to do that yet. give it one moment okay so here's something to um, bear in mind uh, it says the following render appearance images are missing it's telling me that these um, custom materials that I've created aren't available that's because I did this on another computer but no matter I'm just gonna say okay and continue in the background and basically those materials that I've customized they're not going to show up in these renders specifically so if you wanted to do that if you wanted to make sure that they're there you just have to make sure that those custom materials are in the Autodesk the, the proper Autodesk location and I didn't do that with these but we'll still get some pretty interesting results so let's come up here to render gallery and it opens up my Chrome and as you can see here this version these are the ones that are rendering right now so I'm gonna minimize this and open up the last batch that I did and you can see some of the different render um, images that came through from the last one now these ones I did at a very uh, large large scale the 4000 pixels so you can see that um, right now it's just compressed to the viewer however if I downloaded these all and was to open them up in like the Windows viewer I could expand them out and you could zoom right into specific details in these renders. So let's explore some of the options that you have here. If I hover over one of the views and I click on this drop down menu, I can just re-render using new settings. I can render this as a panorama, a stereo panorama, a solar study, an illuminance, or a turntable. So those are some more options that you didn't see in the application, but now that you have them in there, you can re-render them again, and you'd be able to see. Um, so these are something for you to take a look at. The turntable is pretty neat. Um, mind you, all these ones that are animated are going to take a little bit more time. So bear in mind, the larger your image, like these ones were 4,000 pixels, these will take a considerable, considerable amount more time than just the still shot. Uh, so I could say download the image and that just basically puts it into your downloads folder. You can delete this if it's a view that you no longer want. But the adjust exposure, this is the, the stuff that I wanted to really get into here for this video. So something that was a little bit of a pain in the past was if you were going into say 3ds Max and you did a render and you waited for hours and hours and it came out because you walked away and you didn't see it happen there might be something that just ruined your render all in all like the lighting or a specific light or a shadow setting what you can do now is come into this setting here and you can adjust things like your exposure value so just quickly sliding that along you see it's I'm starting to wash out this view it's getting brighter and brighter but maybe I actually wanted it to be a little bit brighter or darker I can make those adjustments here quickly on the, on the fly um, you can change your saturation, which is nice, because sometimes um, the renders that you might get straight out of Revit might be a little bit yellow. Um, so I, I find these are, are nice settings here. Let me just get back to that where it was. Um, the shadows, you can, you can really beef these up, or you can leave them a little bit more subtle. And the midtones if you want it to look a little bit, just a little bit flatter, take some of the warmth out. Um, and then highlights as well, you can add a little bit more highlights to it. So if that's the adjustments that I prefer, I know I haven't really made a whole lot of drastic changes, let's add a little bit more shadow in there. Now I'll just hit apply, 
and you'll see that it's going back into uh, render mode and it's giving me uh, the little icon with the clock and it's going to redo this one for me so you can go back to any of these at any time for instance if we wanted to um, go into this one here we could change that to a panorama and you can get some pretty quick results here so again this is just a, a quick video on cloud rendering and how you can use the post processing features from uh, the online web application to get new results and if you'll ever want to uh, go back to your originals you can come up here to this uh, option here where there's this little drop down menu and if you say all renderings it's going to actually give you um, the original if we come back here and I click on this one this is the original image that I am re-rendering so you'll always have a record of what you've done before so that's kind of nice um, so anyway that's just a, a quick look at cloud rendering and um, I hope you guys are enjoying your experience with Revit so far uh, the options available to you are quite powerful. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave a comment and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching. Bye now.